Hi, and welcome to this presentation on the great stem cell debate, media hype or reality. If you turn on the nightly news, you might get the impression that the future of health care in this country is dependent on how our elected officials and legislators deal with the issue of embryonic stem cell research. While stem cells offer a myriad of possibilities in the treatment of a host of diseases, the use of stem cells harvested from human embryos is really a secondary consideration. This debate might make good newspaper copy and might give politicians valuable airtime, but the real promise of stem cells lies elsewhere. The reason that these cells have caused so much excitement is their ability to transform into the numerous and varied cell types that compose human tissue and systems. They are the first cells to develop in human embryos and exist in smaller numbers in adults functioning as a type of repair system. These cells have been used to successfully treat cancer, autoimmune diseases, strokes, Parkinson's disease, and even repaired the heart muscle after heart attacks. There are three main sources for stem cells. Embryonic stem cells, transplanted adult stem cells, and self-activated stem cells. Five days after the fertilization of an egg, a group of cells called a blastocyst forms consisting of between 50 and 150 cells. When extracted, these stem cells can be induced to become cells with special function in the transplant recipient. While this may seem simple enough, much controversy surrounds this source. First, many experiments utilizing embryonic stem cells have led to the development of tumors, as the ability to control the growth of these transplanted cells is little understood. Second, many believe that the only difference between a blastocyst and a living human fetus is time, so the destruction of the blastocyst to extract stem cells is akin to homicide. So while there may be benefits to using these cells, the debate surrounding them prevents their widespread use. Another source comes from living adults in the form of tissue donations, mainly bone marrow, or stem cells attracted from a mother's placenta after childbirth. These stem cells have been used successfully to treat many disease conditions, and there are numerous research projects to expand their utilization. There are three problems, however, with this source. Transplantation can cost as much as $250,000, limiting those who have access to this treatment. And since only a small number of cells are transplanted, the regeneration time can be quite long, with no guarantee that the cells will even survive. DNA abnormalities may exist in the transplanted cells as a result of normal exposure to the environment of the donor, thus limiting the usefulness and increasing the potential risk of using these cells. The most exciting area of research surrounds the ability of the body to activate its own stem cells to be more effective and greatly increase in numbers. Researchers have found that supplementation with a group of saccharides or sugars called glyconutrients can increase the number of stem cells from undetectable levels to trillions within one week. These results are incredibly encouraging in that the use of these products eliminates the potential pitfalls of other types of stem cell research, including the costs. It has already been established that these sugars are essential in cell-to-cell -cell communication and have been used with great success in cancer and autoimmune conditions. But it is now becoming apparent that they may play an integral role in activation of stem cells as well. This importance is evident in the fact that the study of these sugars, called glycobiology, has led to four recent Nobel Prizes. Positive clinical results are numerous and include a child that was in a completely unresponsive coma for three years. Caregivers started giving glyconutritional supplementation through a feeding tube, and within one week, hand movement was noted. Three weeks later, the child was attempting to crawl out of bed and within one year was scheduled to start school. This healing could only have come as a result of brain tissue regeneration utilizing stem cells, and the timing with supplementation of glyconutritionals is more than coincidence. This is just one of the numerous positive results that have been documented utilizing glyconutritional supplementation, proving the old adage that the human body heals itself and nutrition provides the resources to accomplish the task. 
Thank you.